up. Okay. Oh, I can hear myself. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk, uh, Stacks on Stacks on Stacks. This is my very first public talk ever, so I'm going to be a nervous mess, and I am very happy that you're all here to witness that. <laughs> so about me, I am currently a technical evangelist with Linux Academy, and I'm based in Texas. And I, at some point, was an ATC on OpenStack, Magnum, and RDO, as well as a couple of other random projects. And I have a blog that I update once every few months or so, academybytes.com. Feel free to check that out. And I have social media, apparently. You can reach me on Twitter, at OG Trilliums, and same thing, GitHub, OG Trilliums. So let's talk about OpenStack. What is OpenStack? If you didn't know what OpenStack was, you probably wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> it is open, open source infrastructure as a service software that provides an easy to use virtualization layer between server hardware and you, and has all types of built-in integrations, including a containerization. Container orchestration engine management as a service, which is Magnum, which I just mentioned in the last slide. And I completely lost my train of thought. So we're just gonna move on. What is OpenShift? OpenShift is Enterprise Kubernetes by Red Hat. And I just spoiled my own joke. It's Kubernetes, but enterprise. It's a platform as a service offering from Red Hat that brings together Docker and Kubernetes and provides an API to manage all of these services together. So how does Docker come into the equation and actually it's moving a bit out of the equation in later releases, but I'm not supposed to talk about that. But for right now, Docker provides the abstraction for packaging and creating Linux-based lightweight container images, and Kubernetes provides the cluster management and or and or Kubernetes provides the cluster management and orchestrates containers on multiple hosts. So why would you use OpenShift on OpenStack? Well, you can deploy OpenShift on pretty much anything. It does not care what type of infrastructure it's deployed on, but OpenStack is one of the best, if not the best, options because you have access to virtual machines and you also have access to bare metal. I didn't include that in my slides, but having a bare metal underneath your OpenShift and also having an easily automated infrastructure Good thing. <laughs> it also is um, preferred in the enterprise because it gives the enterprise the option of having multiple options to choose from as far as their deployment method goes and as far as the infrastructure goes. Not to mention OpenShift has a lot of integration with OpenStack with more being added in the 3.11 release, including but not limited to Swift backing, persistent volumes with Cinder, Keystone authentication, so you don't have to manage users separate in your OpenShift environment and your OpenStack environment, as well as a pretty simple out-of-the-box setup, which I am going to demo right over there if you care to check it out. And this is kind of a high-level uh, diagram of what your OpenShift on OpenStack environment would look like. Optionally, you can deploy your load balancers to manage your infrastructure nodes, which, was, which is where your um, networking to your pods would come from, and your master load balancer if you have a high availability environment going. And your router, this is actually kind of fun. Um, with, OpenShift, with OpenShift 3.11, there was an integration with Courier that was introduced. I think it's in technical preview right now, but that will reduce latency in your OpenShift VMs to your OpenStack network out to the public world. There is a lot more to say about that, but I am super nervous and I'm blanking out right now. <laughs> but if you care to come over to, the other, over to the Red Hat booth, I am sure I will have collected myself enough to be able to speak coherently about that. And I'm actually getting through this really, really quickly. So where do they leave off? At the routers, courier latency reduction, sender storage with OpenShift 3.9, OpenShift 
creating persistent volumes in OpenShift and in OpenStack environment has been, an entire step has been removed. Instead of having to write out the, def the object definition for your persistent volume and then write out the object definition for your persistent volume claim, now you just write your persistent volume claim object definition. So that takes one more step off of the developer who needs a persistent volume and you're ready to go. It automatically launches in your OpenStack environment, it connects to your pod and bada bing bada boom. So how easy is it to set up OpenShift? You create your Bastion host in your OpenStack environment that can either be a Nova VM or Ironic Bare Metal. Then you create your OpenShift golden image to be used for your infra nodes and for your hosting nodes. Use that golden image to launch, to launch your OpenShift cluster, your masters, your nodes, your infras, however many of those that you want. From your bastion, you run OpenShift Ansible, and then you profit. <laughs> You've got an OpenShift cluster on OpenStack. The entire process can take anywhere from five to 15 minutes, or possibly more depending on system resources. It's usually pretty quick. And if you'd like to see a demo of that, once again, head right on over to the Red Hat booth after this, and I will show a full demo on launching an OpenShift 3.9 cluster on OpenStack, brought to us by Packstack. So, all right, that was my presentation. Thank you so much for coming out. And if you're interested in making internet friends, <laughs> oh, this was the best way to be introduced to public speaking. Thank you all so much for your understanding. And I am so sorry there was supposed to be a lot more to this, but I am freaking out on the inside right now. But if you have any questions, or if you want to make friends, or if you just need to up your Twitter account so you can get that blue check mark, feel free to add me. <laughs> And if you want any more OpenStack training or OpenShift training, Linux Academy, I heard those guys have some good stuff. So feel free to check us out. And thank you so much for coming. I hope you have a great summit. <laughs>